The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Well, hello there, and welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit, and this week I'm very excited to be rejoined once again by my old friend, friend of the show, Michael Seleski. Sir, welcome back. Good to be back. Dog days of summer. We got some fun stuff in the theaters. We do, actually. It's kind of been an interesting summer in the movies, like not like blockbuster after blockbuster, but you caught a week where we got one. Yeah, I think we got a, I thought we got a big, big one coming up here. It's no, I know I've been looking forward to it for uh, a very long time. Yeah. Uh, you want to jump right into it? With let's do. Let's waste no time with this, and let's get into what we have on the marquee this week. And I'm going to turn to you to open it up to the people. What are we talking about? We're going to be talking about the latest from uh, Jordan Peele. It's uh, Nope is the name of the movie. Nope is the latest suspenseful offering from the mind of Jordan Peele, starring Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer as a brother and sister owners of a horse farm that supplies horses for Hollywood pictures. The business has fallen on hard times since the untimely death of their father, and the feeling of being in an outdated profession in a changing industry puts the siblings in a tough situation. The presence of a UFO startles the horses and sets the plot on its path. A plot that involves a cast of characters trying to capture the UFO on camera so that they can sell the footage. Surviving the encounter while trying to capture the footage is the crux of the movie. The movie works on several different themes, including the exploitation of child and animal actors and comments on an industry willing to put its workers in dangerous and circumstances to get the big shot. Peel's trademark ability for visual storytelling is on full display, as well as his penchant for not hand-holding his audience through the plot. More of a suspenseful action movie than a horror movie, you may still want to keep your young kids from this one, unless you too want to be visited in the middle of the night by little beings. I fear that Peel might be on his Shyamalan arc after the unmitigated success of Get Out, but this is a solid entry in his filmography. Rush out to your local theater, and I know you can see this joke coming from a mile away, but say yes to nope. Well done. I, I, like, your, I like your synopsis of it because this isn't a very a easy film to synopsize, I thought. Because I, there are so many themes. Yeah. There's some red herrings, it feels like, in this movie. And it's it's kind of it's this is a movie that stirred in my head for several days after watching it, and I kind of had to work through some thoughts on this movie. Yeah, I really think that there are some things that are, are brought up in this movie that, um, like, w when you tell somebody you're going to watch uh, a UFO movie, which is more or less what this movie is, and yeah. if you've been watching any of the trailers, uh, they, it they presents really, as a UFO. It movie. presents as a UFO movie. Um, but there are some things in there that you don't really expect them to talk about. Um, I thought the scenes that involved um, the, the 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 tragedy with the Gordy with Gordy, yeah. yeah. There are some storytelling elements in here that you haven't really seen in a lot of uh, of Jordan Peele's films. I didn't know if I enjoyed the the titles of the different chapters mm -hmm. of the movie. It seems very art housey, like mm -hmm. they're trying to make a statement. And I do think like one of the the main points of this movie is is sort of a commentary on on Hollywood and how it's really important uh, the, the 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 lengths the the film industry goes to to get the big shot I don't think that's just Hollywood though I think it's about our society altogether you yep. have a, the TMZ guy every basically everyone in this movie is only worried about how they can make money off of this UFO and that's what I thought was weird about it as a UFO alien movie there's no one in here that was trying to make contact or understand nope. the alien. They just wanted to capture a picture of it and then monopolize monetarily off of that. And the Stephen Yoon's character, that's all he's doing. Since, since a small child was, how do we make money off of this animal, off of this wild creature? Off of... How can I stretch that into fame as an adult? And how can I use a UFO to gain fame and money off of that? And, like, the big problem I have uh, with this movie is you get to the ending of it and I'm, I'm not obviously going to spoil the ending, but I think if these people were to uh, come at a general audience and say, "Hey, here's the proof," I don't think we're I, I don't think we live in a society where people would go, "Yep, that's undeniable proof. You did it. You got it." Somebody would look at it and go, "Ah, oh, that's photoshopped," or right. all of this is digitally altered. And we, we live in a society where you could get away with creating a really good deep fake of this sort of thing. Um, it's definitely not 
a horror movie. No, not not in my, not in my recollection of it either. Where, you know, and like I did say in my review, I I think that he's kind of riding on the edge of the of the Shyamalan arc. Where I think I think Get Out was so good mm -hmm. that studios are willing to throw money at Jordan's Peele's projects, and they're not bad. I we certainly haven't seen like a like a, a downfall in product like from. The Sixth Sense to yeah. Lady in the Water right, type right. movies. That happening, yeah. yeah. But we're getting to a point where I, I'm almost wondering if there's an element of the screenwriting process that's being thrown out a little bit. Because it does seem like they could have made some of the points. And I almost wonder if there isn't like a director's cut of this movie somewhere. There is, that and makes, he says he'll never put it out. Uh, I wonder if it makes more sense. Because there is some logic that the main characters make. And, yeah, and that was kind of where some of my issues hung up with. And I'm actually really looking forward to going to see this again. Yep. To kind of sort out some questions I have in my head and why and where. Because there is a kind of a lot going on. And I felt like there were some red herrings in there that I never fully understood why they were there. Yeah. Um, but I really like, one of the things you, you mentioned, Jordan Peele's visual direction is always beautiful. But he's a great writer. But the thing I always love is he always gets the best performances out of his actors. And I thought that Daniel Kaluuya was great yep. as OJ, a stoic guy who is not going to really show any emotion no matter what is thrown in front of him. Yeah, he, And he, he doesn't really betray anything. So the large chunk of the movie, you're like, what's he thinking? As all this chaos is going on, he's kind of like, well, I got to get back to work. And you're like, what's this guy's plan? What's his deal? And then Kiki Palmer is kind of like his emotional yin to his yang. Yep. It's the id and the super ego. Yeah. And it's, I, the, the couple times that you see uh, Daniel Kaluuya's uh, excitement come through the camera, it really makes you think, oh, man, we're, we're, we're yeah. really getting something here. He's such a reserved actor. Yeah. Um, even, you know, like some of the sound editing in this movie leaves you kind of wondering. Like uh, I, I forget the name of the actor who plays the, the stoic, hard-bitten uh, cinematographer. Michael Wincott, the great Michael he Wincott. He does. One of the greatest voices in cinema. I tell you what. I don't know if it was just the movie theater that I was at, but every time his voice came on screen, the theater rumbled. It was I mean, that's him. Deep. I mean, it was low. He's made a career out of that face and that voice. He yeah. was the villain in The Crow. It was the first time I was like, yep. this guy's amazing. I'm, I'm very curious by him. And he's just, another guy. I'll do whatever it takes to get the shot. I don't care what it costs me. Yep, I don't think he had to stretch real hard for that. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoy it. I like all the themes that are in play in here. And... Um, I feel like it's a film that I need to digest a little more with another viewing. Yeah, like I say, I, I think his product is 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 coming along quite nicely. I think his scope, I, he, he's shown that he can kind of stretch out from being a, a pretty solid horror director. I wouldn't mind if he branched away from thriller for a minute, though. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing a, like a comedy or a dramedy, even yeah. like a like a rom com with him at the helm. I think it'd be really interesting. I, I look forward to his next entry. All right, what did you end up giving Nope, sir? I gave Nope three out of five. Like I said, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it goes off off into the outer space, but it's a very solid movie. It's it's worth your watch. Yeah, my score has been fluctuating all week, and I actually bumped it up yesterday mm -hmm. uh, upon re uh, rethinking some more things. I gave it a four out of five, which is the same as I gave Us, uh, his last film. Uh, really enjoyable, and, and I, I think Us is a stronger movie. I, I yeah. I, I'm not ready to say that just yet. Okay. <laughs> but they're all good. Yeah. So uh, we both recommend checking out Nope in theaters. Uh, also in theaters this week, we have a film from A24. It is called Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. It is created by Dean Fleischer Camp. Um, and he is also uh, kind of the behind the camera star in this film. Uh, it's based on an animated short film about Marcel. He's a tiny shell, a mollusk with one eye, two shoes, and a wonderful outlook on life. He's about the size of a quarter has the voice of a child voiced by uh, Dean Fleischer Camp's ex-wife Jenny Slate uh, working together with this on him and the film is shown as a documentary series being filmed by Dean who is a guest in the Airbnb that Marcel and his Nana live in um, and Marcel is innocent but strangely worldly in his small world um, it's, it's a man interviewing Marcel and filming their interaction and uh, Marcel and his Nana, who is voiced by Isabella Rosalini wonderfully, uh, they're creative in how they get things done as just a couple of shells in a house. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. And it's a ser this series of short films that Dean puts out on YouTube suddenly go viral and Marcel becomes famous. And he tries to use his newfound fame 
to find the rest of his family who has gone missing. Uh, he talks about the community of shells who used to live with him. Um, but uh, he also finds uh, the other side of internet fame as well. And uh, it's not necessarily helpful. One of the things, though, is that he and his grandmother are obsessed with 60 Minutes, and specifically, there she is, Leslie Stahl on 60 Minutes. Uh, that's kind of funny. And uh, he and Dean end up going out uh, looking for his family, out on a road trip. And, of course, if you're a tiny shell going out on the road trip for the first time, there's a lot. A lot of puking on a map, and just some some interesting. It's 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 a fun movie. Uh, it seems so simple, but I found this film to actually have quite a bit of depth to it. Surprisingly to me, I actually went through a kind of a, a range of emotions with this film. Uh, it's entirely original. It had themes of love and loss and uh, sacrifice that I didn't expect out of a tiny talking shell movie. And uh, I found it uh, very sweet. I was charmed by Marcel the Little Shell. What do you think of Marcel? Hi, America. My name is Michael Seleski, and I'm the one person in America that can't stand this movie. Oh, no! I'm You're sorry. the guy! I, I am the one. Uh, when, you, when you see 99% on any, uh, any score, they might see it. I'm the one guy that couldn't stand this movie. Oh, man. Uh, I, How so? Who? I... I don't like documentary, like fake documentaries, mockumentaries. Mm, I'm a big fan of those. I did not care for the 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 formatting of this movie. I didn't like that we got ten to fifteen minutes of how are my levels and why are we talking like this <laughs> and the the backhanded comments that you get when people are making a documentary. Yeah. Uh, it grated on me hard. Really? Uh, the fact that the the shell has got a seemingly child's voice, but then wistfully looks off into the willows to discuss the permanency of death. Uh, a comment that I wouldn't find a child to make. I well, found we don't it, know that he's a child. No, it's it's not canonical, but he's yeah. voiced as a child, right? Certainly. Well, he's very small. Very small. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, like I say, I didn't find a whole lot of this movie to be redeeming, and I might be the only one. Sure, there are some really poignant. Uh, I think the cinematography is interesting. I think there are some themes in there that is good. I don't know who this movie is to pander to. I, it's not made for kids. Kids aren't going to get a whole lot it out of it. It wasn't made for the kids that were in the theater with me. Nope. I'll, I'll it, say it's, that. It's not made for the adults, or at least it wasn't for me. By the end of the movie, when they're still putting things into the movie, like Chiron's, to describe his uh, relationship to the other shells, and there's literally two minutes left of this movie, and yeah. they've given up the pretense of it being a documentary. It was like nails on a chalkboard for me. <laughs> uh, the, the whole thing was nails on a chalkboard for me, and I, I feel like I'm the only one saying it, but... Um, I feel like this is uh, A24's drunk with power moment. They, Interesting. They've, sort of like how Marvel took uh, characters from uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy and said, either America's going to love it and it's going to be great, or it's not and we're going to find out now. A24 was like, hey, we're going to make this uh, documentary about a, a shell, a, a worldly shell, and people are going to go see it sure. because of A24's track record of, of some high-quality films. And for me, I just couldn't. I, I walked out of that movie... Wondering if I was uh, a victim of some psychosis that's only affecting me and nobody else. It could be. I can't diagnose you, uh, at least from here. <laughs> but uh, you ask who the audience was. I'm the audience. I, I really, I, I suckered in for it. I really enjoyed it. I, I love, but okay, I have been raised to love mockumentaries. Christopher sure. Guest, one of my favorite yep. filmmakers. I'm a big fan of the mockumentary. My fan favorite of the documentary. My, my favorite mockumentary of all time is CSA. Shout, uh, shout out to Spike Lee. There you uh, go. That's a good Spike one. Spike Lee. Yeah. But that's, that's the only documentary that I've ever, or I mockumentary thought it was just, that I've really loved. I, I, I released myself and enjoy, got to enjoy the sweetness of this film, I thought. I was fully engaged in it when I wasn't annoyed by the several children that were sitting ahead of me. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and their various noisemakers they brought with them. Uh, but uh, I liked it. I liked the interaction between Dean and Marcel. I liked them. I loved the Isabella Ros Rosalini and her her character's arc. Um, I want to know how much CBS put out to, oh, man. to, to, to have 60 real. Minutes play a dominant part It was a part large of part of this. Because oh. you see the ticking stopwatch several times. We're just name-dropping Leslie Stahl like she's... Yeah, which once again really makes me wonder what the audience was supposed to be about. Because kids aren't going to know what 60 Minutes are. That is funny are. because... People yeah. in my generation don't know what 60 Minutes is. That, I, I, I was thinking that when that became like a plot point for a trope. Yeah. was like, I wonder if these kids have any idea what's going on. No. Leslie Stahl, 60 Minutes, what's going on? So like I say, I, I, I understand that there's some cuteness to it, and it's wholesome. There's, there, there's nothing that's going to make you walk out of the theater. I, I actually did enjoy the bit where they're driving along the mountain, <laughs> but I, I swear, I, I think this movie lost me in the first 10 minutes. 
with the constant, hey, how are my levels? And then gra the, the grandma shell being like, oh, why, why are we filming this? Like, you, you don't need to film explaining to everybody why you're, why you're filming. I just, I'll take oh. some background footage on a mockumentary all day no, long. No, thanks. <laughs> all right, let's give the people very different scores. What did you give Marcel the shell? One. One oh, star. oh, buddy. Sorry. We're almost on opposite ends of the spectrum. I give it four and a half. I really loved a sweet little movie. You're in good company. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I was very pleased to go see this movie. Uh, sir, streaming spotlight this week. You watched a film that I didn't get around to. I want you to tell me about what you watched this week. Well, shocking nobody, You Are Not My Mother is the title of the movie <laughs> that uh, I watched this weekend. Spooky season is around the corner, unless you're in the Seleski household, where it's always spooky season. <laughs> and thankfully, we have the folks not from Silver Shamrock to tell us the real meaning of Samhain. <laughs> Fis Eren drops us this gem of a horror movie into our Hulu streaming feeds this week. Based around some of the better-known Gaelic folklore about Samhain, better known as Halloween, as well as changelings and fairies, You Are Not My Mother tells the story of a family in Ireland who may or may not believe either their daughter or their mother to be a changeling sent from the other world for malicious intent. This movie is horror through and through, with some jump scares, ominous tone throughout, and that classic tension release cadence that horror is known for. There's not much more that can be said without giving away the whole plot, the cast is strong with Irish actors and enough scares and tension to give you a strong sense of foreboding throughout the whole movie. This is the sort of thing that you don't see in the big multiplexes anymore, but if you consider yourself to be a fan of horror, you owe it to yourself to check out You Are Not My Mother. Uh, like I say, I'm, I'm a big fan of horror. I've been a big fan of horror for as long as I've been able to discern it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is a classic film writing where you get a lot of tension, you get a lot of release. That's, that's sort of... It's a very stoic movie. There's not a lot of happy emotion. This is not a movie that's going to bring you from the dizzying uh, ecstasy to just this abysmal horror. This is kind of tough throughout. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I think it, it plays on... It plays really well if you enjoy Irish history or you know a little bit about the Gaelic religion or uh, the Gaelic beliefs uh, about Samhain and changelings and, and babies being changed right. by the fairies uh, and that sort of thing. And this movie doesn't like try to hold your hand through it, doesn't try okay, to good. explain it away, which is good. Um, but there were some images from this movie that are gonna that's gonna stick with me. I, this is gonna be one of those movies be, because it takes place around Halloween time. Um, I think this is one of those movies that you can pop in in September, October, yeah. and really get yourself into the feel for it. Um, like I say, it's 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 really well done in my opinion. I loved it very much. That is great. Yeah, I'm I'm not a big horror guy. I always say, I love good horror. Yeah, but I hate wading through the masses to find that. Yeah, and so oftentimes I will miss good ones until someone tells me about something great because I just I have very little patience for the schlock that you and, have to wade through. And horror done badly is is it's unwatchable. It's almost unwatchable. <laughs> yeah. Unlike like a even a bad comedy, you can kind of watch to 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 see some moments of it, or a bad romantic comedy, you kind of watch to see the train wreck of yeah. it. But bad horror is something that you don't want to sit through. And I, I'm here to alleviate your doubts. This is not bad horror. This is very, very good. Yeah, and it horror. looks like something different than what I've seen before, which is yeah, always what you're looking the, for. The thing I really enjoy about this movie is even I, I watched it uh, once. I plan on watching it a few more times. Even knowing how it ends and how it goes, there are some things that make you want to kind of rewatch it because. There are some dead ends, there are some plot holes that make you wonder if what you saw at the end of the movie mm. is actually what happened, mm -hmm. or, yeah. I you, like that. The, the thing that I really appreciated about this movie is that even on first watching, you're not meant to, you're not meant to understand whether the daughter is or is not a changeling, or the mother is or is not a changeling. Mm -hmm. um, there were some really interesting throwbacks to uh, the early Celtic religions of, uh, you know, St. Bridget and the fire and... Um, like I say, I think it does a better job of explaining Samhain than uh, Silver Shamrock ever yeah, did yeah. with the masks. So, um, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed this movie. And are, are we giving scores for these movies? Yeah, give it a score, sir. What do you end up giving You Are Not My Mother? Four out of five. It's not a perfect nice. horror movie, but it's a very, very good horror movie. And, and I recommend you, it. Do you remember what streaming service this is on? This is on Hulu. Ah, uh, very good. Yep.
Very nice. All right. Lastly, for us this week, I have a new uh, a new segment that I am kind of starting up because a couple of weeks ago, I reviewed a, a, an Indian uh, film called RRR and got dozens and dozens and dozens of messages from people living in India, residents of India, giving me uh, suggestions. It's supposed uh, to be amazing. The biggest interaction I've ever gotten on an episode of this show. Oh, wow. In the history of this show. Shout out to our fans it in India. It was great. I'm a big cricket Tens fan. of thousands of viewers watched this review and gave me, broke down a history of Indian, Indian cinema. And I got so many suggestions. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to start watching some of these movies, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I We're have here a, for the fans. We are. Hey, if you if you want to have that interaction with me, I've always said, I'll go where the fans want. And if I have dozens of people telling me, hey, talk about this, here you are. Yeah. So we have our Indian cinema focus for this week, in which I watched a film that was recommended to me by several different viewers. It's called Three Idiots. It came out in 2009. Uh, it is a Hindi language Bollywood film. Uh, it's a film focused on three best friends from college, uh, Farhan, Raju, and a character named Rancho. Uh, we open in the modern day as the first two, Farhan and Raju, uh, have lost touch with Rancho since college. They are alerted by uh, another former classmate, Chatur, who is a pesky rival to Rancho in college, and he says, I know where to find him. So as the men go in search of him, the film transforms into remembering how they met and bonded during a critical time through adversity and important shared moments together. And it was at an elite engineering school where Farhan and Raju were sent to become engineers and live out their parents' dreams for them. Uh, they were from modest, even poor families. And this other student, Rancho, shows up and he was very different from them. He was very unconventional. He was inquisitive, a bit peculiar, and he was from a wealthy family but never let that show. Uh, Rancho loved to learn, he loved to gain knowledge, but he really had no time for the competitiveness that comes with this environment. Um, he had all the knowledge, but he didn't want to conform to the societal norms that were expected of him. This is where their headmaster, a uh, man they named Virus, uh, comes into play. He was a very ultra-competitive and somewhat insecure teacher who... Um, forced others down rather than raised them up. He loved to punish and bully other the students. Um, he belittled them and really didn't like anyone who challenged his knowledge. Uh, so he liked students like uh, Chatur who bought into just memorize every, everything that was taught to him and not really learning anything, just doing what he needed to do to pass the class. Uh, so as these three friends grow closer and closer, they draw the ire of Virus who wants them expelled and their lives ruined and Rancho also has a bit of a romance with Pia, uh, the young girl that he meets, who also turns out to be Virus's daughter, uh, which that doesn't go over real well with the teacher. Um, and he also, Rancho has a secret that his friends find out about that really defines them that I am not going to talk about. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, but hijinks ensue for sure, but there's a, so much more to this film. Uh, there's some very serious moments dealing with suicide, pressures from family and society to succeed rather than to be happy, and the impact that that pressure has on the psyche. Um, it's also a buddy comedy. You can see it right here. Uh, it manages these tones remarkably well, though. Uh, and the title had me thinking, Three Idiots, and you see the poster, and thinking, okay, this is going to be some slapstick, sticky, dumb yep. comedy. Would have starred Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy in the 80s. Yep. It was not that. It's got a ton of heart. Um, and the, the competing narrative of the men chasing to find Rancho in the modern day and telling the story in the past was great. And it has a great message of chase your passion. You know, don't conform to what others expect to you. Make your passion your profession. Uh, I really like that. A lot of it reminded me of Real Genius. Rancho oh. reminded me a lot of Val Kilmer and Real, Real Genius. Mm -hmm. The guy who's brilliant, doesn't have time to conform, butts heads with the, with the headmaster. Yep. Uh, you know, and so a lot of that, I, I enjoyed that. And then in the serious moments, it reminded me a little of School Ties. Okay. Uh, with him as like the Brendan Fraser character in yeah. more serious tones of what he was facing in that. Um, but it had me, I mean, it had me smiling and then wiping away tears moments later. Uh, and uh, there's a great, I mean, Virus is a great mustache twirling villain in this sure. movie, which is great. You see in the trailer, of course, there's some great song and dance numbers. Bollywood's as, no, best. A, absolutely. With beautiful cinematography. It, it, it's a comedy with a lot of heart to it. And it's a longer running time. Uh, Nearly three hours, 171 minutes, 
And they're able to tell a full story. I feel like if this would have been a standard movie, uh, 90 minutes, it just would have been a dumb comedy. Yeah. It wouldn't have had time for the other portions of it. So let me ask you this. How are you uh, watching this fine Indian con uh, so content? So this was on Netflix. This just was as, on Netflix. Just as RRR was. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I'm kind of, I've got this list that has been forming dozens of movies. Mm -hmm. And that's been the hard thing is, okay, can I track this down? Can I, okay, well, this one's on Netflix, I'll watch this. Yeah. One of them I really have heard about that, that I have to watch, unfortunately, it's five and a half hours long. I'm yeah. kind of working to getting to that. It's, it's a wonderful time to be a, a fan of cinema, to be a fan of movies, uh, because basically, if you want to see something, you can get it, and as long as you can find it, you can get your hands on it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's wonderful to have that ability to be able to look up uh, obscure Indian cinema that you probably would have had a really difficult yeah, time absolutely. getting your hands on even a decade ago. And I'm learning through this, like uh, Amir Khan, who stars in this movie as Rancho, I find he's he's been referred to in things I've been reading. He's the, he's the Indian Sean Penn in okay. both his talent and his method acting and everything like that. And so I'm really enjoying kind of learning things as I go along here. And uh, I really, uh, I mean, I'm... I'm looking forward to some more movies. I've got several that I'm eyeing up right now. You know, if you look at the world as multipolar, I mean, a lot of people think of Hollywood. A lot of a lot of people also. India is a huge country, one of the most, uh, yeah. the largest populous country in the world. Bollywood is a huge name. It is, and I've actually learned too. I don't, I don't have a lot of time to get into it. That Bollywood is just one segment of the Indian yep. cinema, and there's all, it's Hollywood, and, and the, I've had viewers break it all down for me, which is so great. It's been a Flattening the learning curve for me quite a bit. Which you gotta is love a country awesome. that has. You gotta love a country that has the patience to watch a five-day game of cricket and a three-hour uh, buddy comedy movie. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Absolutely. So uh, I, you know, I just say if you if this sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend it. If I'm giving a score, I would give this a four and a half out of five. Woo. Really enjoyable. It's over on Netflix. But uh, three idiots. It's it's worth your time. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, check out new cultures. Uh, before we go any further, I want to uh, get into our, oh, our coming soon segment. How about we do that? Coming soon to a theater near you, August 5th, the weekend of August 5th, we're looking at, in theaters, we have 824's newest slasher comedy. It's called Bodies, 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 uh, about a group of seven young friends who throw a hurricane party in a remote mansion, and the party turns deadly and reveals some ugly truths about those who Looks are there. Looks great. I can't wait for that it one. It does look really good. Uh, we also have in theaters, I've seen this trailer a thousand times, I think, uh, lately, Bullet Train. Uh, starring Brad Pitt, uh, five assassins board a bullet train, and they are all there to fulfill objectives that overlap and end in some action galore. Uh, Brad Pitt, Joey King, Sandra Bullock, Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's uh, it looks like a big action movie. It does and uh, over on Hulu, surprising that this movie is on Hulu. We have Prey, which is the prequel to the Predator franchise. Uh, in the world, uh, Predator uh, is in the world of the Comanche Nation 300 years ago. A female warrior fights to keep her tribe safe from the first Predator, stars Amber Mid-Thunder. And I, when I first saw this trailer, I assumed this would be a theatrical movie, but yeah. it is a Hulu film. And then lastly, over on Netflix, we have a film called Carter. Carter awakens with no memory or knowledge of who he is and finds himself in the middle of a dangerous mission and a voice in his ear, the ear that keeps calling him Carter. Sounds like my Saturday morning. <laughs> Michael, wake up. What's Michael, going on? What's going on? You, someone's about to fight you. Okay. Uh, so that's the movies that are coming out the weekend of August 5th. Before we go any further, I want to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, the palace here in Sun Prairie. Thank you for sponsoring this program and your continued patronage with us. We always appreciate that. Next week, I am going to be talking about movies like Vengeance, uh, the DC League of Super Pets, uh, maybe a movie called Honor Society, maybe a documentary. We haven't figured it out completely, but I'll be joined by the wonderful Steve Sabotke for that, so make sure you tune in. Mr. Seleski, thank you again for joining us, bringing your knowledge and your wonderful synopses with you. Always a pleasure. I look forward to coming on here every time. All right, very good. I'm glad. I'm glad I gave you a movie that you enjoyed. Oh, I always feel bad. I'm like, hey, watch this movie, and uh, I'm not going to watch it, and uh, it's terrible. I, I, I do regret <laughs> Marcel on the shelf. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, oh, by the way, if you want to uh, keep in contact with us and give me recommendations for some movies, you can find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram, Real Reviews TV, Real Reviews K-Sun. Those are the places to find us there. Tell me about some movies you want me to see. Obviously, I'll watch them and talk about them. So 
find us over there. All right, let's get out of here until next week. I'm Jameson. And I'm Michael. Thanks for watching.